I was reading an article about particles of energy. Just the other day, this was, when something in my brain cells went because didn't I have a 10-year-old film called Particles in Space? And didn't the details of what I was reading in the newspaper match up with what I had in that film? They did. For example, the astronauts said they saw three types of charged particles. Quote, pinpoint or star-like lights, explosive flashes, and thin streaks of light. Unquote. This hit home. I had these types of particles depicted in my film. Uh, huh. Anyway, a last quote from the news article about cosmic rays. Some of the flashes, quote, may have resulted from neutron collisions with atoms in the eye, unquote. It seems to me that what the astronauts saw in their actual eye was seen by the artist ahead of the game, presciently, in his mind's eye. I have a hunch that this prescience comes from within, that it is registered in the genetic archives of the body, archives that were laid down millions of years ago. All right. Not only does this film go on about energy like scientists go on about it, but it also goes on about energy quite like the way great African myth makers and musicians go on about it. I found out about this when I got down a disc envelope to read a booklet about the African rhythms I'd used on the main music of the film. It was after the film was finished, that is, the uh, music was also dubbed onto the film track, that I decided to read the booklet that came with the new disc I had bought for that dubbing. So. I was reading away, and hey, I thought, that's pretty apropos. You know what? The music I had chosen was for the African god Shango, S-H-A-N-G-O. And Shango was god of the sky. Hmm. <laughs> then I read on, and it seems that uh, he made thunder and threw lightning around. Well, that's good. That fits in pretty well because I used the sound effects which I got from one of my works called Storm King. This thing here I'm hanging on to, that's Storm King. It's uh, shaken at the top and it makes uh, just one uh, hell of a hullabaloo. Maybe uh, before we go any further <laughs> to get rid of all these fancy ideas we have to struggle with, let's hear some of Storm King sound. Okay, here you go, hang on. After that, I also remembered that for the end sound effect, I'd use the sound of Twister. That's for the end title. So for the beginning title and the end title, I had two Storm figures, Storm King and Twister. And in the middle, I had Shango's African music, and I also had a cut of another soundtrack. And you know what? I read on, 
And the musicologist said that Shango's music had spread throughout the West Indies, that his cult was still practiced in Cuba, parts of Cuba, and in Haiti. So I thought, well, I've really done the hat trick for Shango. I've given him three in a row. I've zeroed in on him through his original music. I've zeroed in on him again through the sound effects of Storm King and Twister. And thirdly, I've used a Bahama jump rhythm. No doubt derivative of his African original. Okay, now let's uh, wind up what we've um, been uh, describing here, and uh, we'll let old Storm King preside over my conclusions concerning this apparently gene-deep artistic consanguinity between me and the Yoruba. The way I see it, both the Yorubans and myself tie in our deepest sense of essential selfness with the feeling of energy. They tie in their feeling with the energy of nature, typified for them by thunder and lightning and in turn personified by their god, Shango. And they exercise this sensibility in the drum and dance rituals of their religion. I tie in my deepest sense of being with the image of energy also. I personify it for myself with figures of motion like Storm King and Twister. <laughs> 